Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police with Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog breaking the trail in the relentless pursuit of lawbreakers in the wild days of the Yukon. Back to the days of the gold rush as Sergeant Preston with his wonder dog Yukon King meets the challenge of the Yukon. This is the Yukon in Arctic winter, the territory patrolled by Sergeant Preston, where cut timber to house the gold booming settlements became almost as costly as the precious metal itself. Spruce Valley, 10 miles north of Whitehorse, on the fringe of a great forest. There, Dan Grady began a logging operation. Lumberjacks Al Stone and Monk Larson were among the first to arrive. To an Indian chief like Taranga, the forest and its wildlife meant food, clothing, and shelter, gifts from the great maker to his people. So when the loggers invaded his hunting ground, Chief Taranga swore revenge. Sergeant Preston was summoned to Spruce Knob when several of Grady's native Indian employees had been found beaten by unknown attackers in the forest nearby. At the camp office, a worried and angry Grady told Sergeant Preston that all of his Indians had since abandoned their jobs, and that furthermore, Al Stone and Monk Larson, two of his lumberjacks, were missing, along with a dog sled and some money from the company safe. Al Stone and Monk Larson. You suspect them of waylaying the Indians and stealing their wages, huh? Well, they took out of here a couple hours after I told them that you were coming down to investigate those attacks on the Indians. Well, what else can you tell me about them? Oh, Al's warm, rugged, and hearty. Monk's just the opposite. He's sly, furtive, unfriendly. Looks like a man afraid of his own shadow. Hmm. Strange combination. Yeah, well, as I understand it, Al was an orphan taken in by Monk's mother. She raised both the kids like brothers, you know, and now, out of a sense of gratitude, Al feels he has to take care of Monk, make up for any of his deficiencies. They take any of your provisions? No, no, nothing was taken in the food locker. The only thing that is missing is the money from the safe. Well, they're probably headed for the Long Valley trading post, then. I better get out there. Leif Wilson, an invalid, and his son Ted ran the trading post in Long Valley with the help of a few Indians. After all the years those Indians have been with us and then vanishing in the thin air. There's something wrong, Ted. Pa, they probably just went off for a powwow in their village. Without telling us they were gone or making a sound when they left? Anyway, it's the wrong time of the year for a powwow. There's something wrong, I tell you. Well. I'm not going to wait around and let you worry yourself sick. I'm going to look for him. Maybe this note will explain a few things. What's it say? Indians watch from Ridge. You bring all guns, bullets to Big Pine by sundown or Indians kill. It's signed Taranga. Taranga, the chief. What's gotten to him? I don't know, but this sounds like he means business. I better go to Whitehorse for help. No, wait. There's no tracks out there. The note's been on the door since last night before it stopped snowing. What difference does that make? Ted, close the door. Tarangas had plenty of time to station guards on the pass. Well, I'll go over the ridge. No, the ridge will be guarded, too. I think you better stay here. But, Pa. Guys, go there! Taranga say kill, only one man leave belly for help, big help. Two, three more white men not stop Taranga. If guns not come by sundown, we attack trading post and take them. Hunt! Hunt, boys! Oh! What's the matter, Monk? Something wrong with the dogs, Al. They're scared. 
Must be the wolves howling that's got him upset. There's nothing to be afraid of. Come on, let's go. All right, on, Huskies! All you Huskies! Oh, there. Hey, Monk, what are you doing here? Get in here, quick. We're in a hurry. Let's have some bacon and beans. No, boys. The Indians around here are going on the war path. We need your help. Oh, don't make us laugh, Pop. We know these peaceful Yukon Indians. You're dreaming. Those Indians won't attack white men. That's right. So hop to it and rustle up that grub. No, please listen to me. The Indians are going to attack at sundown. I got a note from them to prove it. Save it. We got our reasons and we want to get out of here in a hurry. Better do as he says, Pop. Somebody's been pulling your leg about those Indians. <laughs> There's nothing to be afraid of. Anyone else here? My boy, Ted. Well, get him in here. And no tricks. Ted, bring in a slab of bacon and a case of beans. Put that thing away and get him out here. All right, Al. Meanwhile, Ted had sneaked out the rear door of the post and headed toward Whitehorse, having despaired of arguing with Leif over the need for help. Hey, Monk, what's the holdup? There's no one in there. Huh? No one in there? He disobeyed me. He's got to get stopped. The Indians will never let him get the white horse alive. Hey, wait a minute, Pop. Oh, let me go. You don't understand. Ted's gone for help. Oh, he went for the Mounties, huh? Well, Indians are no, we're not hanging around here. Get that stuff in the sled. Please, he's got to be stopped. He'll never make it. Here, Pop. This ought to cover for all the stuff we took. <laughs> came from the valley. All right, King, on your huskies. Oh, huskies. That shout came from over there on the slope. What's the matter with him? This, but he's still alive. And the old man wasn't as wrong as we thought. We'd better get out of here, Al. No, we're taking him back to the post. Yeah, but Grady will have somebody on our trail by now. Look, I've done a lot of mean things in my life, but I never let a man die when I can save his life. Now, take off his snowshoes. Stone, Monk Larson? Yeah. You're under arrest. For robbery and assault. Assault? This is Ted Wilson. Did you attack him for the same reason you beat up Dan Grady's Indians? Oh, we didn't beat up any Indians. We just found him. The old man said he was on his way for help. This is what stopped him. I just took it out of his shoulder. There's that wolf cry again. That's no wolf, it's an Indian. More than one, according to the old man. We thought he was crazy when he said the Indians were on the warpath. Leif Wilson isn't crazy. I'm going to trust you two to help me take Ted back to the trading post, where we can remove that arrowhead. Till then, it'll keep him from bleeding to death. But his old man said that the Indians were going to attack at sundown. You can't force us to go back there. Shut up, Monk. We'll go back in case the attack does come. You can trust the sergeant. All right. Put your guns on the sled. If you need them to defend yourself from the Indians, I'll return them. I'll put Ted on the sled. Easy. No sign of the Indians yet. What are they waiting for? Why don't they do something? Now, take it easy, Monk. Remember, we're all in this together now. Don't let it get you down. I'll try, Al. I'll, I'll try. Good, good. Now, you stay on lookout, and I'll report to Sergeant Preston.
Assured that Ted would recover, Leif brought Sergeant Preston up to date on the events that occurred before his arrival. He showed him the threatening message from Taranga. The name of the chieftain struck a responsive note in the memory of Al Stone. Taranga, wait a minute. We found a note like this on the bunkhouse door at Grady's camp just before we left. Why didn't you leave this for Grady? We thought it was meant for us. Take devil's knives from hunting ground or die, it's signed Taranga. This might explain why Grady's Indians were beaten up. How's that? Well, Taranga probably did it himself. He didn't want them working for Grady, trying to force Grady out. You think that's why he wanted our guns to wipe out Grady's camp? Exactly. He doesn't want loggers in what he considers his private forest. That's why the saws and axes have come to represent symbols of evil, murder, and devastation in his troubled mind. That's why he calls them devil's knives. You think he'll scare the Indians into believing that stuff? Joining his rebellion? Yes, or convince them that Grady spells doom to their hunting ground. Is this why you left so suddenly? No, it's finding those Indians beaten up and not knowing who was doing it. We never even heard of Taranga. Didn't you realize that by deserting Grady, you'd point suspicion to yourself? We never thought of that. Those Indians were our friends. We worked side by side, and Monk... I mean, uh, we got to thinking we might be next, and it got under our skin. You mean under Monk's skin, don't you, Al? Well, we had some money coming to us, so he took a handful out of the safe and beat it. Hey, I see something. Hurry, come and take a look. For 10 minutes, Sergeant Preston watched the ridge, trying to estimate the number of Indians there by the number of smoke plumes rising from behind the ridge. But still, the attack did not come. Wires. Probably for arrows and torches. Looks like there's every intention to burn the post, right? Burning? Not me! And go out there. You saw what happened to Ted. I don't care. I'd rather be shot than burned. I'm going out there! Look! Sorry, Al. Better stand guard at these windows with a rifle, Rafe. And Al, huh? you go into the storeroom, bar the door, and guard that window. We get our rifles back now? You do, but I'm not ready to trust Monk with one. Give him a rifle, Rafe. And Al, I'll not tolerate the unnecessary shooting of one Indian, understand? How are you fixed for ammunition, Leif? Short. Sold almost all I had to Dan Grady when somebody started beating up his Indians. Sure use Grady's help in more ways than one. Sounds good, Sergeant. But how are you going to get word past Taranga to Grady? Yeah, there's one among us who might get through. King. Get a piece of rawhide there. Take this to Dan Grady, King. Dan Grady at the lumber camp, understand? Grady's an old friend. We just came from there. Stay. Be careful, King. Be careful, understand? Stay under cover as much as possible, because those Indians may try to kill you. Come on, let's go. Mm. Good. He's going straight for the ridge. He knows that's the shortest way. If the Indians see him, do you think they'll suspect he's going for help? Taranga might. I just hope he doesn't spot King. King's sharp ears picked up the whine of an arrow leaving its bow, and his reflex action barely saved his life. He made the ridge. Nothing will stop him now. Let's hope he can get Grady's outfit here before Taranga attacks. Well, let's get the fire buckets ready just in case he doesn't make it. Come on. Anticipating that the Indians would not attack until dawn, Sergeant Preston, in order to conserve his energy, decided to take a short rest and assigned Leif to the first watch.
All right, let's go, you huskies. Man! Look out! Let me out of here. I'm going after Monk. You can't go out there. You've got a job to do here besides that suicide. Now get back to your post. Sergeant President. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's this? Long Valley Trading Post under siege. Expect Indian attack by dawn. Bring all available men and guns. Hurry. Sign Preston. Dawn. We haven't got much time, Kent. <laughs> I'll pick up my men on the way. Come on. Here we go, boy. <laughs> Back up here. You're sick, Al. The kind of sickness that running away won't cure. He told his mother he'd get over it up here. The Yukon would make a man of him. I wrote her he was doing fine, just fine. A lot of good that'll do her now. If you want to read your report. Al. The truth about, about him turning coward will really break her. Well, I'm a policeman, not a philosopher. For me to explain why, why Monk Larson ran out there alone to face the deadly arrows of hostile Indians is well, it's beyond my province. Monk is dead. The report would simply say that he died trying to escape through enemy lines during the siege of the Long Valley Trading Post. It, it sounds like Monk died a hero, like. Like he was going for help. It'd be a great relief to his mother. With honoring instinct, King avoided the valley approach to lead his party to the ridge behind the Indians. Sergeant was heading for the trading post, but Long Valley's over that way. I hope that dog's right. Sergeant could have been sidetracked, I suppose. Let's go. Let's go! All right.
this trail leads over the ridge to the trading post. Now, wait a minute. That rat's gunfire. By taking us this way, King kept us out of a trap. What a dog. Come on. All right. Don't hit anyone. Pinned down. Grady should be here with help soon. Look out, Sergeant! Ah! And King got through. All right, that's far enough, Holden. Got here just in time, Dan. Things were getting hot. Glad we could help. I shouldn't have left Ted alone. Keep him on the guard, boys. Hold it. Is that enough? What he needs now is understanding. Come on, Frank, on your feet. All right, get over there against the counter. Where did you find Monk? About a quarter of a mile from here. Yes, Sir Anger admits killing him. He'll be tried for his murder. And the rest of the Indians admit that they were wrong in following him. I've told them that the government will provide a hunting ground for the whole tribe. Leif and Dan, they're ready to go back to work for you, if you'll have them. Well, Al? Stay put, boy. After all he'd done for us, what runs through your veins, Sergeant? Ice water? Yeah. Well, we're sure safe, Grady. Well, I've decided to drop the charges, Sergeant. Uh, Al just took a little advance on his salary, and we figured it out so he can work it out. Well, if there's no complaint against him, I'd say this case was closed. <laughs> <laughs>